வணக்கம் ஹூ சேஸ் யூ கேனாட் லேர்ன் வைல் ஹேவிங் ஃபன் வெல்கம் டு த கிரேட் டான்பேப் ஸ்குவிஸ் த இன்ஃபர்டெயின்மெண்ட் ப்ரோக்ராம் இன் த ரன் அப் டு தி ஆன்வல் கான்ஃபரன்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி தமிழ்நாடு அண்ட் பாண்டிச்சேரி அசோசியேஷன் ஆஃப் பிளாஸ்டிக் சர்ஜன்ஸ் டு பி ஹெல்ட் ஃப்ரம் ஃபெப்ரவரி நைன்த் டு லெவன் ட்வெண்ட்டி ட்வெண்ட்டி ஃபோர் Question number 1 Skin grafts thicker than 0.6 mm usually correspond to full thickness skin grafts and are called Thiersch Ollier graft Blair Brown graft Wolf cross graft Padgett graft The correct answer is the wolf cross graft. Skin graft can be classified based on their thickness. 0.15 to 0.3 mm corresponds to thin split thickness skin graft known as Thiersch Ollier graft. Grafts of 0.3 to 0.45 mm correspond to intermediate split thickness skin graft or the Blair Brown graft. Skin grafts of 0.45 to 0.6 mm are thick split thickness skin grafts or the padgett graft skin grafts more than 0.6 mm correspond to full thickness skin grafts known as the wolf cross graft question number 2 the dorsal boundary of the thinner space in the hand is formed by adductor pollicis muscle oblique septum from the skin to the third metacarpal the first lumbrical muscle first dorsal interosseous muscle and the answer is a adductor pollicis muscle we shall now see a cross sectional anatomy of the palm to understand the boundaries of the thinar space anteriorly we have the tendons of the flexor pollicis longus the flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus of the index finger and the first lumbrical muscle posteriorly it is bounded by the adductor pollicis muscle on the radial side the thinar space is limited by the insertion of the adductor pollicis into the proximal phalanx of the thumb and on the ulnar side is the oblique septum from the skin to the third metacarpal question number 3 the first person to apply the principles of tissue expansion in bone was cordvilla elizaro mate newman The correct answer is Cordvilla. In 1905, Cordvilla applied the principles of using an external distractive force to encourage tissue expansion in bone. In 1970, bone tissue regeneration was documented by Elizarov. In 1970 again, Matev reported the expansion of bony tissue after amputation of thumb at the metacarpophalangeal joint. the induction of new soft tissue growth adjacent to the bony structures undergoing gradual lengthening was noted in 1957 newman implanted a subcutaneous balloon to induce soft tissue growth purposefully for the reconstruction of an external ear deformity question number 4 the most superior point of the external auditory meatus is the trachion porion stomion orion the correct answer is the porion the trachion is the junction of the hairline and the forehead in the midline the porion is the most superior point of the external auditory meatus The stomion is the midline point where the upper lip touches the lower lip. Question number 5. The technique of wrapping diced cartilage in fascia to give it a shape was developed by Errol Thudicum Jones Daniel.
The correct answer is Daniel. Diced cartilage has a vital role, especially if it is wrapped in a substance like fascia to give it a shape and is used in rhinoplasty. The technique was developed primarily for dorsal augmentation by Daniel. Errol demonstrated that diced cartilage in a surgical wrapping could be useful and he called it the Turkish delight. Question number 6. To what is the high risk of non-union after treatment of a proximal pole scaphoid fracture attributable? Volar entry of anti-grade blood supply into scaphoid, volar entry of retrograde blood supply into scaphoid, dorsal entry of anti-grade blood supply into scaphoid or dorsal entry of retrograde blood supply into scaphoid. And the correct answer is dorsal entry of retrograde blood supply into the scaphoid. As far as the blood supply to the scaphoid bone is concerned, we need to remember two points. The blood supply is retrograde and the blood supply is dorsal. This is because the main blood supply to the scaphoid enters through the non-articulate dorsal ridge at the waist of the bone from the dorsal branch of the radial artery. This accounts for 80% of the blood supply of the scaphoid. But there is a volar supply too. A separate volar arterial branch to the scaphoid enters the tubercle and gives about 20 to 30% of the scaphoid's blood supply and this is mainly to the distal portion. Question number 7. What is the level of the cervical lymph node shown? Level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4. The correct answer is level 3. Among the cervical lymph nodes, level 1A corresponds to the submental group, level 1B corresponds to the submandibular group, level 2 is represented by the upper jugular group, level 3 the middle jugular group and level 4 the lower jugular group. The posterior triangle group represents level 5 and the anterior compartment group represents level 6. Question number 8. The muscle marked by the arrow is levator veli palatini, musculus uvule, palatopharyngeus, palatoglossus. The correct answer is levator veli palatini. This is the levator veli palatini muscle, the musculus uvulae, the palatopharyngeus and the palatoglossus. Question number 9. According to the NPUAP staging system, the ulcer shown would be classified as stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4. The correct answer is stage 2. In stage 1, there is intact skin with non-blanchable redness of a localized area usually over a bony prominence. In stage 2, there is partial thickness loss of dermis presenting as a shallow open ulcer with a red pink wound bed without slough or it may present as an intact or open ruptured serum filled blister. In stage 3, there is a full thickness loss. The subcutaneous fat may be visible but bone, tendon or muscle is not exposed. Stage 4 is a full thickness tissue loss with exposed bone, tendon or muscle. Question number 10. Sensory innervation of the superior medial part of the breast is by anterior lateral intercostal nerves, medial intercostal nerves, cervical plexus, Superior intercostal nerves.
The correct answer is the cervical plexus. The anterior rami of the lateral cutaneous nerves of the intercostals provide sensation to the lateral portion of the breast extending to and including the nipple areola complex. Branches of the cervical plexus provide the sensation to the superior medial portion of the breast. The anteromedial intercostal nerves provide innervation to the medial breast and the nipple areola complex. I hope you liked the video. I enjoyed making it. Please register for the TANPAPS 2024 conference, a wonderful scientific and academic feast where many innovative and interesting sessions are being planned. Do visit the website to see the details and to register. Vanakkam.